start the video and start the screen capture. A lot of you say, why do you do both? Well, in case something happens to that in the middle of class or something happens to this, I have a backup. So that's why I do it. You just pick which one you want to look at. All right, what I'm going to do for the first day of class, I meant the first day of actual lecturing, since we've already covered logistics of the class and we covered uh, my lab plus. Now I'm going to start going through chapter one and two. That's the reading. So if you're new to the class, you need to be reading chapter one and two. Uh, now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through chapters one and two and I'm going to pick out the things that you need to write down, you need to highlight, you need to, you know, study for the test. Okay? So we'll go ahead and get started with that. If you've got a book, it kind of helps to follow along. Not just write the stuff that you need to write down. I'll give you the page numbers as well as the um, definition and all that good stuff. Now, Statistics. What is statistics? When you hear the word probability and statistics, basically, statistics is the gathering, the calculating, and the interpretation of data. Okay? Data is what you're researching. Uh, make sure you know what data is. So that is a, this is on page five. Make sure you know what data is. That is how many white cars are in the parking lot. That's data. How many trees are in the parking lot. That's data. Now, we don't know how many. We go out and look. We go out and count. That's the statistics part. It's going out and counting, going out and getting the information. That's this right here. So there's two test questions, possible test questions right there. Now, these two guys, population and a sample, that's the two groups that we work with. This class, the six or eight people that are here right now, if I asked you, what's your favorite color, and y'all said blue, then I would say, okay, the sample said blue, so the average favorite color at the Anderson campus is blue based on the sample because the population would be Anderson campus. Okay? I used you eight people. Of course you can't do that because eight people is not a good enough sample for four or five hundred that go here. Alright? So the population is usually your larger group where the sample is usually your smaller group. Now why would you want to do all the statistics and gathering of a smaller group versus a larger group? The two most important things in our life, and what are they? What are the two most important things in our lives? Time and what? Dollar signs. Money, time and money. Is it easier to survey 30 people or 300? 30. 30. So, a lot of times the sample is used to predict the population. Write that down. 90% of the time, or above, it's called a confidence interval. The sample is used to predict for the population. So if I ask eight of you if you're in the Marlboro Club or not, and seven of you go, no, I'm not in the Marlboro Club, then I can go to the president and say, 90% of Pendleton students, I mean 90% of Tri-County Tech students are not in the Marlboro Club. That's basically what I just did. I used you as a sample to predict for all of Tri-County Tech students. Now, 
that's when you get into the mathematics of is this feasible for eight people to predict the whole population. And that's when we get into chapter 6, 7, and 8. This is chapter 1. All right? So make sure you know these four definitions. Data, statistics, population, and sample. Okay, I'm wait, waiting for the question. What about census? Did I cover it? No. Then you don't need to worry about it. Hammies. What, what about census? What about census? If I don't cover it, chances are you don't need to worry about it. Census is something that's taken every 10 years. That's basically what it is. It's a gathering of data every 10 years across the United States. Okay? I don't think it fits in. It fits in with what this is, but it doesn't fit in with this group. I don't think it does. That's just my own opinion. I think it fits in as a sub-definition of data. That's just me. All right, so there's your first. Anytime you get one of these boxes in the book, make sure you kind of put a, one of those little plastic tabs on the page so you can go back over it right quick because chances are if they're in one of these boxes, orange, yellow, manila boxes, chances are it's going to be on the test. And four out of five of these are going to be on the test. Okay? So that's a highlight. Let's see what else we're going to highlight. Let's not do that. And that's basically what I do. I go through the whole chapters one and two, and I tell you what's important. I don't go over the responses. That's, that's for a research class. That's not for us. We're just studying how to get the data and what do we do with the data after we get it. You'll get all that in a research class. If you take classes at Clemson or wherever, they'll give you a research class and then they'll tell you what, what kind of survey to use. Okay, correlation. Write down correlation. And write down correlation does not imply causation. In other words, correlation means that you can look at data and you can predict something from that data. Meaning, if 90%, if you look at the data and 90% of this is see a slant going down this way, then you can pretty much predict that you have a negative correlation. Uh, we're going to see some examples, but what I want you to do is I want you to be looking at that definition right there and causation. Look at that definition. Find it out. It should have it on this page somewhere. Probably on the next page, but that's fine. Probably have some examples too, and we'll look at the examples. That'll do more than anything. They will, because I, I know there's pictures in here. We'll get back. We'll get back to the correlation in just a minute. Here's your mathematics in chapter one. Real tough stuff. Okay. Uh, most of you have had pre-algebra and introductory algebra, so I know you know this material. But I'm going to shout. This is on page 11. I'm going to go up to a white page here. And we're going to talk about page 11, Mathematics. And this is just a review over percent, uh, decimals, percents, and fractions. Fractions, decimals, and percents. Now, I don't spend a lot of time on this because I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but I am assuming that you all know how to do fractions, decimals, and percents. For those that haven't had pre-algebra in a long time, I'm going to cover a couple of things. Uh, a fraction is basically a ratio, or over ratio. And the best way to show a ratio, a ratio. 
Best way to show a fraction is with a pizza. It's the best way. Because everybody can relate to it. And that pizza has eight slices, I think. I don't know if it eight or not. I'm not a pizza cutter, so I don't know. My pizza, I never did work with pizza. I just dang over get to join up. Let's see. One, two, those stuffed crust to join are good. Three, take some cheese and some mozzarella and take some extra pepperonis and put on them. They dang good. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry about that online class. All right, so you got eight pieces of pizza. If you eat two of those pieces, then you have eaten two eighths, or you've eaten what? One fourth. You've eaten a quarter of that pizza. And if you take your handy dandy highlighter, not that big. <laughs> and if you shave those two pieces in, what does that mauve piece look like? A quarter. Okay? And that's a fraction. So I'm not going to go into fractions too much, except for what kind of fractions are there? There's improper and proper. Improper is top heavy. Improper is bottom heavy. And what is what is a mixed number? A mixed number is only used for units of measurements. It's not even a fraction. I guess you could call it a fraction, but a mixed number is only used when you got feet, inches, pounds, cups. This is the only time you use a mixed number. Think about it. You don't walk into Walmart and ask for 25 thirds feet of rope. You ask for six and a half feet or seven and a half feet. That's when you change it into a mixed number. So mixed numbers are only used with units of measurement. Okay? Always, what is the always rule for fractions? Always what? Always reduce. You don't walk into the Walmart and ask for a 5100 cent wrench. You can, and you can watch the guy go ask 15 different people, which I've done. They don't make a 5100 cent wrench. 5100s is what? One half, Hubert. That's right. They make a one half inch wrench. They don't make a 5100. They don't make a 3 6 inch wrench. They make a one half inch wrench. Okay? Because it's the same number. It's the same it's the same fraction. It's the same number. It's the same mathematical value. So that's fractions. Decimals. Decimals are another way to write fractions. Another way to write a fraction. And the best way to show you is with something over 10. Because the decimal values, if here's the decimal, what's this first decimal value right there? That's the tenth place. And what's beside it? Hundredth. And so on. So anytime you can put the denominator as a base of 10, it makes life a whole lot easier. So if I want to write four tenths, four over ten, as a decimal, four over ten means four tenths, which would be what? Point four. And that's how you do it if it's got a ten or a hundred or a thousand under, or ten thousand or whatever. You just put the numerator in the decimal point. But what if you don't? Well, what if you have two fifths? Or let's say three fifths. Well, there's two ways to do this. One is you can change that into a tenth. And five will go into ten how many times? Two times, Hubert. Good class. Two times three is what? And six over ten is? So that's one way to do it. Or you can do it the old mathematical way, just divide it. 
Divide 5 into 3. Well, it won't go into 3, so you add a 0 to it. And how many times will 5 go into 30? 6. It's a miracle. You got the same answer. So you can do it this way, or you can do it this way. Now, why can you not do it this way all the time? Because 3 won't go into 10. It will, but it'll give you a decimal. So you have to rely on the division to change into a decimal. Okay? So, basically, what we're talking about, fractions, decimals, and percents, is three ways to write a ratio. Pour over ratio. Percent. Percentus. What does centus mean? Well, cent, centipede, century. What does centus mean? Centipede, century, cent, as in a penny. Huh? No. How many pennies are in a dollar? Hundred. So century, centipede, cent. Centus means what? I can't get nothing by y'all. Okay? And what does per mean? Miles per hour. When you hear the word per in mathematics, it's not a sound cat makes. Per. Miles per hour. What does that per mean? Huh? Yes. But what, there's, there's four mathematical operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What does the per mean? Yeah, which one is it? I just asked y'all. Which one is that? Is per. It's division. Per. Because it's miles per what? Hour. So per means divided, right? So somebody tell me what percent means. What does percent mean? There you go. Percentus. Percent means divide by 100. So if I give you 26%, that's equal to 26 over what? And I made a fraction, or I can make it a percent, I mean make it a decimal by saying what? There you go. Now you got it. So you can rewrite a fraction as a decimal, a decimal is a fraction, a fraction is a percent, a percent as a decimal, blah, 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 blah. So if I give you 33%, then you put it over 100, and you can write it as 0.33, or you can write it as 33 over 100. Now, can I reduce this down if I left it a fraction? Let's say we didn't do this. Say the direction, say, leave it as a fraction. What would I do with this fraction? 13 over 50, good. If it says leave it as a fraction, then you need to reduce it all the way down. If it says write it as a decimal, you want to leave it over 10, 100, or 1,000. Well, 100 in this case because it's percent. And that's your mathematics in chapter 1. Okay? Everybody feel good about themselves? So I can knock you down later. Where is my book? I lost my book. Don't tell me I lost my book. There it is. All right, so that's on page 11. Make sure you know how to do that because that's a test question. Okay, thank you. That's a test question. Now, it may not be, we're talking, so far I've got about five questions to pull from. I told you that chapter one and chapter two was probably 20% of your test. So if I give you 20 questions, that's four questions. Okay. We've already went over uh, about six questions so far. 
and four. So, you know, that could be that could be one. See, I'm going to put like eight to ten questions in a pool, and when you get to that question, it's going to pull, it's going to pick from six to eight questions. It's going to pick from one of those. So this is one of your possible questions right here, changing from this to this or this to this or this to this, whatever the case may be. Okay. So definitions got the four or five definitions. Then we got this. So. We're moving on. We will go back to correlation before chapter three is over with. So just bear with me. I thought they put it. We've been reviewing another book, and I think I got it mixed up with the other book. I think this is homework in the book. If I pass this. No, it's not. Is it? Yeah, 1.2, or does 1.2 start on this page? Well, I guess we're in 1.2. Oh, whatever. Go away. Thank you. Now, these are all more questions. Hey, gone. Say in 1.3. Starts at the bottom. Okay, thank you. Okay, 1.3 starts at the bottom. Types of data. We already talked about sample sampling population. Okay. Ding ding. Write these two down. Hubert, we wrote one of them down. No, you didn't. Statistics is one of those words that has two definitions. Okay? The first definition usually is with a capital S. It's when it is talking about a, you know, getting, getting the, the world of getting data, obtaining data, calculating data, interpreting data. That's capital S. If you see a lowercase s like this, that means a numerical measurement describing some characteristics of a sample. Okay, just forget that. Let me show you what. Let me show you what a a, a, a sample and a, and a parameter is. I told y'all a while ago that the big group is called what? The population. The population. So in this case, we're going to use Tri County Tech students. That means the students at Easley campus, the students at Anderson campus, the Coney campus that they're building or getting ready to build or whatever, um, the, the, uh, the Career Center in Williamston, the, uh, all the different little campuses we've got all over the place. That's all, if you are paying Tri-County Tech for a class, you are a Tri-County Tech student. That could be five or six different places around the three county area. Right? So that means any formulas, any variables we're going to use, variables are what? Letters, right? Algebra, you know, your letters, A, B, C, and D. Most of y'all dealing with X, with algebra, X. Well, the variables with the population, we're not going to call them variables, we're going to call them parameters. Remember, P, P. Parameters, population. We're not going to use var we're not going to use the word variable because it's too algebraic. We're going to use parameters. Now the parameters are always going to be Greek letters. The ones you're going to see the most of in this class is mu and sigma. You don't think this is funny when I tell you why we're learning this, but now what is the smaller group? Sample. Sample. And we're gonna say Hubert's 102 students. No, I'm sorry. 
one twenty. That could be three classes. The online's that are watching. And this class. Of course, this is a smaller group than this. Now, we're not going to use variables with this group either. With variables is algebra. We're not going to use that word. We're going to use statistic with a little s. And these variables that are called statistics, okay, they're not variable, we don't call them variables, they're going to be just regular letters. And the ones you're going to see the most of is X bar and S. They both mean the same thing as mu and standard deviation. I'm sorry. Average mu and mu and sigma. Mu and X bar of the mean. Sigma and S is standard deviation. Well then why you gotta put them two separate? Context. What does context mean? Like context clues in algebra, um, algebra. Context clues in English. What do they mean? You need to figure out what. What the word means, right? Yeah. For example, if I said something about so, well, so has three definitions. What's the three definitions of so? Uh, Needle and thread, that means so, S E W. What's another definition of so? Grass seed. Grass seed. Heck no, I wasn't expecting anybody to know that. Usually nobody knows that. That's, I, know. I don't know. But <laughs> usually that's another part of me that says it's your parents' fault. But you messed that up. What's the third definition of so? Spelled differently. S O. S O, like so. So if I just say so, I could be with three definitions, but if I said so a darn, so a darn means what? Needle and thread. Darn is your socks. You got a hole in your socks, you darn it. It's your parents' fault. Okay. So if you're in a meeting, let's say you're in a meeting, let's say it's ten years from now and you're working for Michelin or you're working for uh, Floor Daniel, or you're in a meeting next suit and tie meeting, board meeting, whatever. And some whippersnapper does a PowerPoint and he throws up there these two guys. Then you know it's going to have to deal with the what? Population. But if he throws up these two guys on the PowerPoint, you know it's what? It's the sample. And therefore you don't sound ignorant when he says... You know, this is the sample and this is standard deviation. I mean, this is the population. So all, the only reason you use these as parameters, mu and sigma, they mean the same thing as these two guys, is to know what it, the context of using these. That's why you learn. Do you just pick which one you want to use? Or? No, no. In other words, if you're dealing with, if I, if, I, if I want to do the average age of people in this classroom, then the average would be X bar and the standard deviation would be S. But if I did it for Tri-County Tech, it would be mu and sigma. And I'm telling the person like reading it. the information, I'm telling them this is the population without saying population on the top. <coughs> when they're reading the information, if they know anything about statistics, they know that if they see these two guys that I'm dealing with the population, if I put these two guys on there, I'm dealing with the sample. No. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the question will say, the question will say, this is a population, sigma is blah, blah, blah. It's, it's going to, they go together. They don't, you don't interchange them. You don't use, you don't use S with the population. The question will say it, that if they, the question will say it, or you know it. One of the two. I mean, it's going to... You, you, we don't have to deal with it that much. In other words, the question will say, the population is blah, 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 find the mean and standard deviation. 
Well, when you write down the mean on your paper, you go mu. Standard deviation would be sigma. If, it, if the question asks you to put the whole thing in and you put S, it's going to mark it wrong because the question asks for population. Okay? I have a question on the samples about data. Mm -hmm. And so it don't say samples as data. Yeah. So most of the time, most of the time, if the question does not say, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be sample because most of the time in statistics we're dealing with sample because we don't want to have to deal with what? Population. So most of the time it's going to be this. You'd be surprised at how many people don't know that that's the only reason these are explained is for context, like in a meeting or in a problem, and I just give you a sheet of paper with my work on it, and if you see sigma, then you know it's with the population, and if you see S, you know it's with sample. That's the only reason we teach that. Okay? So this gives you an idea that you're dealing with what? That. And this gives you an idea that you're dealing with that. And these two guys are called statistics with a little s. And these two guys are called what? Parameters. Parameter, population, sample, statistics. And that just gives context. Basically, that's all that does. You ever played six degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon? Y'all have no idea what that is. It's your parents' fault. It's a game. You have to read it right here. It says it right here. It started a long time ago with some other game, but the people started doing it with Kevin Bacon. Who's Kevin Bacon? He founded Bacon. No. Who's Kevin Bacon? He's a movie. He's, a, he's an actor. Okay? And he's just about played in everything. And one of the games is Six Degrees of Separation. You're supposed to name an actress or an actor or a movie, and in six steps or less, you can type Kevin Bacon. I'm not good at it. I suck at it. I love movies. I love movies. I'd rather watch a movie than sports. Because I'm not a big cake man, okay? So I'd, I'd much rather watch a movie. Especially with Sadie Bullock's in it. Alright? But, name an actor or an actress or a movie. Taken. Who? Taken. Taken. God, I suck at this. Okay, I only know one person in Taken, and that's Liam Neeson whatever his name is. Liam Neeson played in all the Taken movies, but he also played in a movie with Bross Pearson. Bross Pearson, about these two Confederate Civil War people that ran after each other. Bross Pearson. Pierce, 